Your elbow and forearm have four primary motions, extension, flexion, supination, and pronation. Following an injury or surgery to or around the elbow joint, you will want to focus on improving these four movements. First, assess your range of motion. For flexion and extension, film yourself from the side while standing. For flexion, bend your elbow as far as you can comfortably, and if needed, apply gentle overpressure at your end range. For extension, straighten your elbow as far as possible without moving your shoulder. Then, measure the angle formed between the middle of your shoulder and your wrist for each motion. For supination and pronation, film yourself standing from a front view with your elbow bent to 90 degrees and thumb pointing up. To make the measurement easier, hold a pen or pencil in your hand. For supination, rotate outward so your palm is facing up, and for pronation, rotate inward so your palm is facing down. Measure the angle formed between the middle of your shoulder and a line parallel to the pen or pencil. Expected range of motion is approximately zero degrees for extension, although some may possess more, such as five degrees of hyperextension, 140 to 150 degrees for flexion, and 80 to 90 degrees for supination and pronation. Using your other elbow as a reference point, your goal should be to restore full elbow range of motion following an injury or surgery. However, there are three things to consider. First, if you had surgery on both sides or your elbow is not a good reference due to a prior injury, then you can work towards the numbers previously mentioned. Second, understand that these are average values. Depending on your injury, surgery, history, etc., you may end up with less or more motion. And finally, most daily tasks only require a limited amount of elbow and forearm range of motion. For example, several common activities only use about 30 to 130 degrees of elbow flexion and 50 degrees of supination and pronation. So even if you are unable to restore full motion, you might only notice minimal functional restrictions on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, this ultimately depends on your goals. If you only need to complete office or household tasks, you may not notice a subtle loss of end ranges. However, if your goal is to compete in weightlifting, you will likely need to restore full range of motion or very close to it. In general, exercises can be placed into three categories, passive, active, and resisted range of motion. When you can perform each category and how fast you progress, will depend on various factors. For example, if you had surgery to repair a torn biceps tendon, you will likely start with passive exercises within a given range of motion in order to protect the healing tissue. And then over the course of weeks, progress to active and resisted exercises. On the other hand, if you experience elbow stiffness from a chronic injury, you may perform any or all these exercises right away. As you can see, exercise selection is widely variable case to case. So before beginning any of the exercises, you should first get clearance from your surgeon, medical doctor, or healthcare provider. Let's start with elbow extension range of motion. First, elbow extension with a dowel. Line your back with elbow at your side and a towel under the arm. Holding a stick or a dowel, use the non-involved side to gently push the elbow into more extension. Hold your end position for two to three seconds. Use as much assistance from the uninvolved side as needed. Another option is simply letting gravity help straighten your elbow. You can do this sitting or lying down. If extension is improving and you need to intensify the stretch, add a weight onto your wrist or forearm. Active elbow extension. Actively move your elbow through your full range of motion placing an emphasis on trying to straighten the arm as far as you can. You can do this standing, sitting, or lying down. Band assisted elbow extension. Anchor a band to an object, and while on your hands and knees, place the band just above your elbow. Then rotate your arm inward until your elbow crease 
point straight ahead. Move your elbow from a bent position to as straight as possible. Start with a lighter band, and you can increase the resistance over time if you need. Bicep curl with eccentric emphasis. Support your upper arm on a preacher bench, the arm of a couch, or a barbell with a pad in a squat rack as shown here. Slowly lower a weight for three to four seconds, trying to straighten the arm as far as you can. Pause at the bottom for two to three seconds and repeat. Using similar categories, here are options for elbow flexion. Passive elbow flexion. Use your other hand to bend your elbow into as much flexion as tolerated. During each repetition, hold that end position for two to three seconds. The goal is to keep your involved side as relaxed as possible and let your other arm do all the work. Active elbow flexion. Actively move your elbow through your full range of motion, placing an emphasis on trying to bend the arm as far as you can. For the resisted exercise, you can perform a single arm tricep extension while lying on your back. Your goal is to keep your shoulder at 90 degrees of flexion as you move your elbow through as much range of motion as possible. Move slowly and under control with a slow tempo, lowering for three to four seconds and pausing at your bottom for two to three seconds. Additionally, as you gain more strength and control, you should consider other strengthening exercises such as standing single arm tricep extensions with a cable or band and standing bicep curls. Focus on moving through your full elbow range of motion under control. And finally, for supination and pronation, here are two options. First, active range of motion. With elbow at your side and bent to 90 degrees, rotate your palm up and then slowly turn your palm facing down as far as tolerated. And second, resisted range of motion. Hold a stick, hammer, or the bottom of a dumbbell and slowly rotate your forearm in one direction and then slowly rotate in the other. Pause at your end range for two to three seconds during each repetition. When performing these exercises, I have three recommendations. First, you do not need to do all the exercises in each category. You can choose one for each movement or simply focus on the one range of motion you want to improve. Second, keep symptoms tolerable during exercise. Some discomfort is okay, but they should not be unbearable. And third, these should not lead to an increase in symptoms the next day. If they do, back off the volume and or intensity of the exercises. It is important to understand that these exercises are just some options to consider they can help with a wide variety of elbow issues that present along a variable time frame. Exercise selection and timelines will vary based off of your injury, surgery, symptoms, goals, etc. For example, I would expect rehab for a biceps repair to progress through the exercises over the course of a couple months, and ultimately, you should achieve full elbow range of motion. However, Recovery from surgery of a fractured or dislocated elbow may take slightly longer and achieving full elbow range of motion may not be realistic or necessary. In summary, following an injury or surgery, your goal should be to restore full elbow range of motion or very close to it. However, unlike other joints, a loss of end ranges may only result in minimal functional impairment with daily activities. Exercises for improving elbow range of motion should focus on extension, flexion, supination, and pronation. When you perform the exercises and your timeline for progression will vary based on the surgery performed, precautions, tissue healing times, goals, etc. Regardless of the case, in order to maximize results, perform the exercises often, keep symptoms tolerable during and minimize excessive soreness the next day. Once again, before starting these exercises, make sure you talk to your surgeon, medical doctor, or healthcare provider. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure you tap that like button, subscribe, and even turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future content. Until next time.